So we're going to talk about cancel culture today. So this notion of things from history, should they be cancelled because of the artist or whoever's yeah. actions? Mm -hmm. Which are being, being judged by the context of our own time. I think maybe it's different if you've had a fall from grace when you're still alive. You were very famous, very successful, then you are cancelled. Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl, children's author as well, which is even more interesting. Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, Willy Wonka. What do you want to call it? Is it Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Timothy Chamelet completely <laughs> overtook. And in the Twits, Mrs. Twit is no longer ugly and beastly, but just beastly. So the Oompa Loompas were small men, now they are small people. Dave Chappelle or Ricky Gervais. Like, they, they take the piss out of everyone. As long as there's good context behind your joke, I'm fine with it. I think comedy is being crushed by liberal, pathetic, soft jokes that are not funny. Ah uh, yes, this is the moment we get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> they have very wide demographics and very wide audiences. And when you have comedians like Ricky Gervais who are punching down on these communities, it shows that that's okay. The children and teenagers who think it's then okay to go and be transphobic or racist or sexist at school because they've seen Ricky Gervais get thousands of laughs. Yes. But okay, so are we saying then that cancel culture is good or bad? Sensational. And go. And go. And go. We're in. We're here. With Mazza. <laughs> Is that your nickname? I'm <laughs> so calling you Mazza from now on. No, not Mazza. Hmm. Mazza was, no, Mazza's Mazza. not good. Is it Mazza's not? not very professional, is it? It's not. No one's going to take me seriously as Mazza. But they may not take you seriously after this episode, so don't worry no. about it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be, that's my new brand. Mazza. Mazza. Oh. Mary Pattinson. You always say that, Pattinson. Pattinson. There's no N in Pattinson. No, there's not. Pattinson. No. Pattinson. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Hi. Hello. How you doing? Good. You? Good. Lovely. We're doing the whole hi thing again, aren't we? <laughs> we doing are, we are. Thing. We're going gently into this <laughs> outrageous episode that we're about to have. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about cancel culture today. We are. Should we intro about... Mary, though? No. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, first of all. I was just all. in the corridor. They needed some third person <laughs> to come in. in. Yeah, <laughs> we've only just met her. Yeah. It's been about five minutes. <laughs> um, but no, thanks for joining us this time. Mary, Mary normally helps us behind the scenes. Mm. She's a legend. She is. And now we've got you in front of the camera. Woo. Woohoo. <laughs> That was really in sync. That was really in sync. I love Amazing. that. Nice harmony. Mm. Yeah. Get for the Christmas yes. songs later. Get for the Christmas songs by R. Kelly. Yeah. 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 Speaking of which. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> segue <laughs> very nicely <laughs> into our topic of conversation today. Absolutely. We're going to talk about why, well, not why, we're going to talk about if people should be cancelled. Yeah. Or if people, or if their work should be cancelled, should they be cancelled? Should their work be cancelled? So many questions all around so cancel cancel culture. culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if this is a piece of art by Picasso, for example, mm -hmm. should that be cancelled? Because apparently he'd done a few things that were quite ambiguous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this notion of things from history that are still relevant today, being watched today, perceived today, should they be cancelled because of the artists or whoever's yeah. actions. Mm -hmm. Which are being, being judged by the context of our own time. Yes. yes. The present day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thoughts, are we starting with Picasso? I think we should. Let's start with art. Yeah, okay. Art is an interesting one. So Picasso, mm. I didn't really know he was problematic. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't know until, this till you done the research yesterday. Until the, so yeah. thank mm. you for that. Mm. Yeah, so he had a few ambiguous relationships mm. with younger women mm. and was potentially not very nice. Mm -hmm. um, Had six wives or something? Countless yeah. lovers. Countless Count lovers. <laughs> was a bit well, they said countless. Does that mean they can't count them? <laughs> There's just too many to count. It's too many. Was too he was painting. up on these streets. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think he might have been a bit exploitative to yeah. these ladies. Okay, it's terrible. Yeah, it was awful. Um, but of course, it's I, just rumours. Just, yeah, hearsay. It's hearsay. Yeah. So then how far do you go? Hmm. Well, I think you keep going, you keep researching and you keep looking into his life and asking questions about it mm -hmm. alongside his art. So you've mm -hmm. got the context of what he was doing mm -hmm. and then you can reinterpret that art. Mm -hmm. So say a few years ago, were we to look at that art without the context, we would have a completely different perspective on it sure. and we'd interpret it differently. 
but there's no point in just getting rid of it because he's done these things mm. supposedly we should look at it again with that context and then interpret it and say okay you know he was maybe more voyeuristic than we thought or whatever that interpretation mm. is mm. Mm -hmm. look at it through a new lens and understand his position um and what that context was okay but not get rid of it not eradicate it not eradicate the art or eradicate art. his his infamy that's never going to go i mean you can't really eradicate infamy from do you history. think so no i don't think not that easily anyway mm -hmm. if anything it's going to make him more famous if mm -hmm. you start talking about it and start digging into it mm -hmm. do you think so that's quite yeah that's an interesting point because when cancel, cancel culture came around with social media right well it yeah. was it was enabled mm -hmm. by social media yeah, at least kind of, yeah Linked. so yeah and social media is such a saturated platform that if you have like tens of thousands of people talking about it they're going to be infamous either way mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because so, okay so one of our work colleagues rachel was watching the film american beauty okay which stars kevin spacey mm -hmm. but she didn't know about the specifics of the allegations that he's had mm -hmm. so to her it was more like i'm just watching a film with kevin spacey mm. yeah because he's been eradicated from popular culture. Mm. So Rachel, who's 22 or 23, doesn't know about the things mm. Kevin Spacey's been allegedly, has allegedly done or been, been uh, he's got away with them actually, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so he, yeah, so Kevin Spacey's just not part of that timeline, that mm. 10 year timeline. Mm. No one yeah. knows who he is. And if you're mm. 23 now, 22, 21, you're not gonna know who Kevin Spacey is. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying that the infamy, like that, fame that you had is gone i think maybe it's different if you've had a fall from grace when you're still alive mm -hmm. and then you get eradicated okay. you can you've sure. you've you've had that fall from grace you were very famous very successful then you are cancelled by the public and you kind of go into hiding right like kevin spacey himself kind of went into mm -hmm. hiding yeah. he completely retreated mm -hmm. so he also brought that upon himself he okay. took himself out of the public sphere mm -hmm. i think it's different if you if you're dead picasso is dead long gone mm, yes and has been famous since <laughs> then <laughs> yeah can't confirm he's not alive he's not it <laughs> and so you know there's no there's no uh potential for him to retreat mm -hmm. there's a kind of a different type of um there's there's a different way of looking at people i think mm. after they've died mm. and the way that they're in the public imagination sure which essentially it is, it's your imagination because you're thinking about this person who was alive years mm. and years ago. Do you think it takes away from his art? It frames it in a different light. Mm. Do you think I so? Think, yeah, mm. once you have the context, it's like what you said about, about Rachel, mm. not knowing who Kevin Spacey mm -hmm. necessarily is and the allegations against him. I think it's the same, mm. right? Mm. Like we said, we didn't really know this stuff about Picasso until we read up on it. Mm. And now for me personally anyway, when I look at his work, that context will definitely come into play on mm. how I see it, how I perceive it. Okay. I think you can still be a genius though. There's no, there's no denying you can still be an artist who is abusive or any number of horrific things, but also be kind of a genius in your work. Mm -hmm. um, but as you say, it's, it's how, you, how you look at that art. I, it's the same with Lucian Freud, who I think is a kind of similarly very voyeuristic and has exploited numerous women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to really love his work. Then when I started reading more about that, now when I see a vulnerable woman on a sofa, that is, I see that in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. sure. She's no longer got the same kind of agency that I might have seen years ago when I didn't know that context. Now I see a far more vulnerable woman and it's a more difficult view it's a far more difficult experience when you're looking at art when you know there's been this power imbalance and it's the same with kevin spacey i used to love his films i used to watch all films with kevin spacey in and i've I, i've actually not really seen any since mm -hmm. and Con i think I would, consciously um yeah i've not gone back to them you know I, I might go back to films that i really loved in the past but now if there's a film that he's in I probably wouldn't watch it because I've got that context and it's just a bit icky now. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem we've got. It's, it's a good thing you brought that up. He has not actually been convicted. Mm -hmm. He's actually got away with, mm -hmm. I think he's been to court three times and mm -hmm. yeah. he's got, like, it's been cleared. 
each time. Yeah. So isn't it fine to watch his films? Because according to the law, he's innocent. It should That's be. That's a good point. Yeah. It should be. On paper, it should be. So here's the problem we have then. So say, for example, he is innocent. I'm not saying he is. Just putting out there. I'm not saying that he's innocent. <laughs> he could be guilty. But if he's innocent, he's been accused of something or m- numerous things, but he's still innocent, mm. he hasn't done it, mm. then it's completely fine to watch his film, surely. Mm. But because he's been besmirched in the public eye, mm-hmm. people now, like yourself, will not watch his films. Mm. Is that fair? Mm. I think on paper it's not, because you know what is the foundation of our democracy is a legal system that works. Mm-hmm. And if that is not the case, then we don't live in a de- democratic society. So Absolutely. on mm-hmm. paper, that should be correct. But inevitably, you are persuaded otherwise, I think, and the public is persuaded otherwise, and there's this kind of emotive aspect to it. Mm. You hear the stories from the other side. Mm. So whatever the judge has decided, unfortunately, the public has also made a decision. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. What about Amber Heard? I mean, in that case, I think they were both. Yeah, that's a whole other (laughs) (laughs) package. What's it called? Tin of worms, can of worms. <laughs> all the cans, all the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Spill everywhere. <laughs> the aisle is a mess. <laughs> yeah, there's that's worms, all there's milk. There's a, just, it smells bad. It's just awful. Just don't go down there. Just spat. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Just don't nice. go down there. Um, that sums it, up the is case. It, <laughs> <laughs> mess. <laughs> Chaos. Is it, is it both of them? It's not both of them. It's Amber Heard. I'm not talking about Johnny Depp. So Amber Heard yeah. accused him of various things. Yeah. And the court have now cleared, well, the US court have cleared him mm-hmm. of these things. Mm-hmm. She has a film coming out mm-hmm. in a month's time, mm-hmm. Aquaman 2. She's in a lot of the film. I don't think it's going to do very well because a lot of people do not like her based mm-hmm. on the fact that she's made accusations and she's obviously turned out to be either lying or or not lying, who knows? But the courts have said that she's lying. The UK courts have said that she's not lying. The US courts have said that she is lying. Should Amber Heard, her film, should her career be over? It's so tricky. It's so difficult when it's, I think it's, the, the reason why it's so difficult, especially in this case, is because they're both so famous. Forget about Johnny Depp. Okay. okay, so just Amber Just Heard. Amber Heard, yeah. 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 But I don't think you can forget about Johnny Depp. I don't think you can forget about the whole thing, the whole entity, because... Well, you can't, but I'm just talking about Amber Heard. Okay. I'm not saying should Johnny Depp be cancelled, I'm saying, or not have a career. I'm saying should yeah. Amber Heard not have a career. How does that work? Sorry, segue for a sec. Mm-hmm. How does it work if, like, the UK court says that she wasn't lying and the US court says she was? How does that... Because they're two very different legal systems, so they go with different, um, and the two cases were very different as well, but also they, they, they see things very, very different. Like one thing could be perceived one way by US law and the other way by UK law. Okay. Yeah, so. So then what, what's the overall verdict? There is no overall verdict. But in oh. the US, she's been accused of lying. Okay. Or she didn't win the case, per okay. se. Because um, I think Johnny Depp sued her, if I remember correctly. Mm. Right. For her making claims that weren't true. Is that called defamation? Yeah, it's called defamation. Just started watching Suits. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You um, know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I just wanted to That's fine. understand that. Forget about Johnny Depp. Yeah, I, it's so difficult. <laughs> and I wanted to explain, like... Go on, go on. Explain no, no. with Johnny Depp, go on. No, I just think... I think that because with the Johnny Depp thing, because they're so famous, they've got these tribes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like- Like fan bases, right? Yeah, it's not like a random couple have gone to court. It's like Johnny Depp literally has a tribe of Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And no matter what he does or what he says, there will be these supporters. And therefore, even if he's done the most heinous thing, Mm -hmm. I think he will still have supporters. Mm -hmm. And those are the people who are saying, you know, she's the witch, she's the bad one in the situation. It becomes into this, it get, it's like this weird so Disney you're saying this good, is bad beyond thing. the courts, mm. this is now public opinion. Exactly, and even yeah. the whole, okay. the, the fact that. that it was 
broadcast, I think is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the fact that it was this trial on TV that people bought into as entertainment mm -hmm. is disgusting. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't, that. it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be this on, you know, this staged performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there was, there was, I think there were so many factors in this whole thing. They're really famous. They've got these tribes. There's a lot of underlying sexism mm -hmm. with good and bad and who's done what. Mm -hmm. And it's being broadcast to the whole world. Yeah. So that's just kind of fueling the flames of this whole case. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to then say, should this person be able to do that when you've got like all these things going on? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, if you were to say, should she still have a job after she's been what charged for defamation? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I think so. I think... All right, Johnny Depp. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to say, yeah, he should have a career because he's been cleared of these but. charges. But I also think from... And this is now I'm completely... Um, you are, yeah. I'm going back on what, everything I've said because <laughs> I, as the public, have judged him. But I also think from what I heard and read, sure. he did also abuse her and uh, manipulate. And Allegedly gaslight allegedly yeah um but i mean there was a lot of there was a lot of um evidence that got published about all of that mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. he's not a nice person either i think he's horrific i think what he did and all the evidence that was laid out was mm -hmm. horrific no matter just what just gonna point out she shat in his bed she did <laughs> yeah the, the story of the year just eradicate anything yeah. you've just said with a simple yeah. shit so, so she's nice one she's fine she could have a career she should maybe bed. neither of them should they should just both there you go, go. Stop. exile yeah just i don't know stop acting yeah. go yeah take a break i think that the, what you said is really prevalent in mm. the fact that something as you know as strong and as serious as the allegations that were made mm -hmm. were publicized yeah. for the public, the public yeah. consumption and like made out to be entertainment like i saw it was everywhere literally everywhere mm. you didn't have to tune in it would be on social media the clips would be mm. all over the place and it's such a horrific conversation to be had between anyone mm -hmm. let alone two people that are huge in hollywood mm. i think that in itself is something to take into consideration mm. as well Mm. And then if it's on social media, it's being completely taken out of context. Yeah, because things were lifted, weren't they? Yeah. And manipulated to be in favour of mm -hmm. either one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of an unfair bias when you were watching it from social media. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed, agreed. Who else did we have on our list? Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. Ooh. Roald Dahl. This one was a really interesting one because it, it <clears> goes <throat> out of the way of like being on TV or cinema or social media. This is an author. These are mm. books. And a children's author as well, which is even more interesting. Absolutely. Yes. So let's talk about it. Let's give some context sure. here. So Roald Dahl, we all know from books like Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, Willy Wonka, what do you want to call it? Is it Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. Sorry, Timothy Chamelet completely <laughs> overtook. Um, <laughs> um, his books are being looked over by sensitivity writers and some phrases, paragraphs, what have you, are being rewritten to be more in line with today's language mm -hmm. in terms of being politically correct. Yes. Um, derogatory language that maybe wasn't as derogatory back then. Mm -hmm. Um, so on and so forth. And I believe we have some examples. We do. Mary has some lovely examples. Do you want me to pull them up? And I can't wait to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this links very much into Picasso because... Yes, the art forms. The art form. And as someone who's also passed away, so we're talking about people's art that is now in the present, but the individuals of these art pieces, in this case books have been accused of things that they cannot defend themselves for. Yeah, that's an interesting point as well. It's out of their control. Out of the control. And then on top of that, their art has now been in the public arena for so long. Mm -hmm. It's just entrenched in, in society. Yeah. Um, go on. So um, some examples are Augustus Gloop in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is now described as enormous. <clears throat> it doesn't say what he previously was, but I'm assuming he was fat. Um, and in the twits, Mrs. Twit is no longer ugly and beastly, but just beastly. Um, She's beautiful and beastly. No, not beautiful. Okay. But, but just, just beastly. Just, just beastly. Yes. Okay. Um, and then and mm -hmm. then it goes on. Um, 
References to female characters have disappeared. Miss Trunchbull in Matilda, once a formidable female, is now a most formidable woman. Um, and so it was a formid- formidable female, it's now a formidable woman. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, there are gender neutral terms which have been added as well. So the Oompa Loompas were small men, now they are small people. Mm-hmm. Um, and does it say why that one was changed? That's quite... So it doesn't... Not for that one specifically, okay. but a spokesperson described um, these changes as a collective for people who are passionate about inclusion and accessibility in children's literature. Okay, sure. Thoughts? I have never heard anything like this before. Mm. And I don't know whether that's just me being ignorant to these kind of platforms, mm. but to rewrite something mm. as like, you know, as iconic as Rye. I used to read his books all the time mm. when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just really interesting. I think from his, the Roald Dahl Collective, are they called? Mm. Or something like that. His company anyway, that makes these decisions um, said that this is a regular thing that they do to kind of with the sensitivity writers is look over these texts and make sure that they're sort of up to scratch with the present day rhetoric. And, yeah, I just, I, I'm not sure why that's the case in something like these books. Hmm. I think, um, I think if if there are issues with books, they shouldn't be rewritten. They should be uh, replaced with something more contemporary. If 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 someone, a teacher, a parent, um, thinks there is an issue with a term or a phrase, I think that should be spoken about. Um, and bring in new writers, bring in new children's authors who are writing better. If that is the issue, that these texts aren't well written or they are now dated, bring in a new book that is what we should be reading or children should be reading, but keep that text, read it in the context, talk about why it's damaging or detrimental to a person's perspective on the world or description of people if you're describing someone as fat or ugly talk about why that's bad yeah have Um, those conversations and have those conversations and I don't think I think it's a um I mean Raul Dahl was also known for a whole lot of other things that aren't very acceptable either but I think he would be um disappointed to say the least to know that his texts are being rewritten um and the point of a writer is to write very specific words and very specific phrases. You know, there's so much thought that goes into those descriptions. I think, to be honest, they shouldn't be rewritten. I think they should be replaced if there's an issue. Yeah, I totally agree. Make new art, make new texts that, you know, that bring forth that inclusivity that these guys are trying to mm-hmm. bring into the conversation. Because you, you're right, like if you eradicate these words that an author has specifically written and just kind of glisten over it and make it clean you're not those conversations are really important to a child as to why they are wrong Mm. you don't just you know if a child does something wrong you don't just say oh well we're going to rewrite what you just did we're going to pretend that this happened because that's what what's right Mm. you have the conversation as to why Mm. it's wrong right and i think Mm. that same sort of dialogue needs to happen Mm. in these situations Mm -hmm. yeah totally it's bullshit. Yeah. Because <laughs> also people... I mean, <laughs> simply. It's absolute sim- bullshit. Shit in a bed. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme. Because <laughs> also no one has the right answer. It's not like one person knows exactly what needs to be done mm. or how things should be done. Mm-hmm, so it's not absolutely. like there's one rule that we can all abide by. Yeah. It's still very subjective with what should be said, what shouldn't be said. So... Who is anyone to come in and say, Absolutely. you know, don't say that word, but you can say this word. Who's to say that in 20 years time, that word's then mm-hmm. not acceptable. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're going through time, just rewriting every single piece of literature yeah. ever written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why stop there? Why not pick an obscure writer and stop their work? Yeah, like, exactly. You could go into the library, pick up that obscure book and see words that are offensive now. Yeah. Change yeah. that book as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Why is it just roll dial? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Just, they're just covering their backs, it seems like. Mm. Yeah. And also, it takes it then takes away... Say if Raldar is calling people fat and ugly and all the mm-hmm. rest of it, mm. and you're then kind of um, 
making it glossier and more acceptable, mm -hmm. someone reading that more acceptable version is then going to assume Roald Dahl thought those things. Mm -hmm. So they're then going to assume, mm. oh, Roald Dahl was actually so ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. He yeah. actually was so accepting. Yeah. We then, children will then have a very different perspective of who that writer is and any writer that is mm -hmm. edited. Mm -hmm. So it's so important not to do that so that we know what those authors' perspective on life and people were so that we've got an accurate representation of who those people are. Yes. And no one's perfect, you know. Everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes. And, yeah, and times change. And you know? times change. The, the terms Ever that he evolving. was using yeah. back then were just seen as normal terms. They weren't seen as uh, aggressive because they were children's books. Like, yeah. they were seen as acceptable. Mm. Like, what, 40 years on, 50, 60 years on, it's now seen as offensive. But that's, that's ridiculous to keep going through time and changing things that someone's written is art. You yeah. can't change art. You can't mm. splash a piece of paint on the mm. Mona Lisa and go, she's got a moustache, it's not allowed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> get rid of the moustache, get rid of that, over shave it. over it, get rid of it. Yeah. Like, mm. that's the piece of art that a person's created. It's absolutely unacceptable to go in and change that person's art. Absolutely, mm. and, and amending things like fat as well goes into the conversation, like words like fat, you make it out to be a bad word, but there's so many conversations at the, mo at the moment mm -hmm. that are trying to redefine words like fat. Like mm -hmm. it's not a bad word, or yeah. so say some people. Like it's like what you did with BAME mm -hmm. and BAME agency. It's like, you know, reframing the word that yeah. has been so stigmatized for so many years. Mm -hmm. And that's what, they're, they're basically eradicating that, saying that that is a bad word. Yeah when it isn't no not at all it's it's uh it's nonsense absolute nonsense it's like uh, a lot of music especially in the 50s and 60s a lot of terms where you know guys are saying um high school girls attractive and i'm gonna date the high school girl which is obviously nowadays seen as very wrong <laughs> are you gonna go in and get ai to replace all those songs mm. all those lyrics and change mm. those lyrics like mm. how far does it go yeah, mm. it's like it's like Friends as well. We were just talking about. I was watching Friends recently, R. and R. like, Matthew Kelly, Matthew Perry. yes, R.I.P. Matthew Perry. That's one of the reasons I was watching it actually. Really? It's like mm. coming to the top ten on Netflix uh, because um, R.I.P. Matthew. Was he Perry. funny? He is yeah, funny. He's, yeah, he's very funny. Really funny on that mm. show. Yeah. And um, and yeah, some of the language that they use in that is like incredibly. Yeah. Charged. Yeah. Charged oh, yeah. is a great word. Charged, and like yeah. some of the situations that they, like some of the scenes that they produce is just like crazy. The conversations that they have, the language that mm -hmm. they use mm. is absolutely not fitting in mm. today's society mm. and culture. Mm. Yeah. So then what do you do? But you laughed. Uh, it's interesting that you say that. I think certain things, I'm trying to think of specific examples, which I should, probably should have thought about before, but no, maybe not the things that I found necessarily. I think it was one of those things, you know, where you make the face. Mm. Mm. What well, I think one of the things in Friends is that kind of, it's like the butt of the joke is to be gay. That's like a, a, yes. a recurring theme throughout mm. the mm. show, which is not funny. Mm. And at the time people probably did find funny. That's kind of something that we wouldn't laugh at. Now, yeah, absolutely. But it kind of shows how far we've come I think, which is also a really important thing. So people now watching it will hopefully realize that when that show was made, however many years ago, it's kind of, you can see, okay, that's what people thought then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to know the context of people who have faced the brunt of homophobic abuse. That's, that's the kind of humor that they were subject to all the time. Yeah. That's really important as well, to know the context that so many people were having to live through. It's a footprint of history, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, yeah it mm. is definitely a footprint. And it's those subtleties, I think, as well, of like, when you're the butt of a joke in popular culture, mm -hmm. that really ingrains and that's so damaging for your mental health and everything. Yeah. But that's a very important thing to realize when you watch something like Friends, like some of it is still very funny. Some of it is definitely not funny. Yeah, absolutely. But seeing that now and, and then you can kind of think, okay, that's what so many people had to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And it was all these microaggressions that you wouldn't have necessarily liked when I was a kid. Obviously, I didn't have much context to sort of homophobia and that side mm. of the conversation. But like these microaggressions that were just slipped in as well. You're so right. It just shows how far we've mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. um, and just yeah, how easy it was to put into those dialogues as well, mm. which yeah. is is crazy, and how accepted. Mm. Which brings us to Dave Chappelle. 
That it does. That it does. You can start with that one. to comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy yeah. portion yeah, of this good. conversation. Yeah. That was a wicked segue. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well, you, you started it. <laughs> you finished it. Hey. <laughs> look at, look well, it's not finished yet. It's, we could screw it up. Yeah, that's true. I think we are right? screwing it up, quite frankly. This is rambling. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dave so, Chappelle. Dave Chappelle or Ricky Gervais. Which one do you want to delve into? One is quite extreme. One is quite soft. Uh, well, if you're you on think? the end, if you're on the end of it, maybe it won't be seen as soft. No, so. I think they're both quite. Yeah. Mm. Quite awful. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. <laughs> I, would, I would agree. Yeah. I don't okay. Think. I'm going to put my cards on the table here. I don't think either of them are awful. Interesting. Tell us why. I think they're doing comedy. They're making people laugh. Now that may be. Like they they take the piss out of everyone, black, white, um, straight, gay, small, fat, big. Everyone gets it. They don't go, I'm great. He even takes the piss out of himself, Ricky Gervais. He goes, I'm 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 fat. So I think when comedy is on the, on the in, on the table, I think there's certain places you can go to. It's not every place, but you can go to certain places as long as there's good context behind your joke. I'm fine with it. I think comedy is being crushed by liberal, pathetic, soft jokes that are not funny. Ah, uh, yes. This is the moment we get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> or I get cancelled. It was yeah, nice you knowing you guys. <laughs> I'm leaving you behind. Because I think um, with Ricky Gervais, I think his comedy is now just lazy and he punches down. Um, and I remember watching his comedy, you know, when I was 18 mm -hmm. and I thought it was really really good mm. i thought wow you know all his you know it's when you first you know read christopher hitchens and you're mm. like anti-religion and all mm. this mm. Mm. and his comedy was very interesting um and now i watch it and his stand-up and he's just recycling the same jokes the um the butt of those jokes are the same people and i think there's something very very actually very damaging when you know all his trans jokes are actually having real life effects on people when the trans community are taking their own lives more than, you know, many others. Um, it's really, really serious. I think it's really serious. It's not just, oh, we're canceling comedy. It's what are the actual implications of you punching down right now? Because I think there are so many topics that you can be really smart with and so funny with. And I think really intelligent comedy goes beyond that. It doesn't punch down. Um, so that's my two cents mm -hmm. on yeah, Ricky. I absolutely agree. I think when you're making comedy at the expense of a community that's already a minority, that's already getting a lot of hate and a lot of discrimination, like you said, there's so much more out there that you could comment on that would probably benefit your audience and yourself in turn. For example, you have comedians like Daniel Sloss, who... Who? Daniel Sloss. Who the fuck's that? <laughs> He's a comedian. He's really funny. He's Scottish. And uh, I, I don't know why. I just like that. Because they talk. Their accents are important. <laughs> the fact that he's Scottish, you know, does it for me. And <laughs> he talks about um, sexual harassment and sort of specifically when you see someone who's in your circle acting a certain way and you are not part of the problem, but you see it. So you're essentially you're fine, mm. but actually you're also part of the problem because mm. you're not speaking up to yeah. that person. And he, he comments on that and he says, and he's admitted, you know, he's like, I've done it, you know, and it turns out that I can be part of the solution even if I'm not part of the problem. And I think things like that, that you say that are very intelligent and comment on society and comment on the issues of society are incredible and a really clever way to get these messages across to your audience. Mm -hmm. And audiences of, of comedians are so diverse. They never usually, unless you're specific to your comedy, they have very wide demographics and very wide audiences. And when you have comedians like Ricky Gervais who are, you know, punching down, I really like that um, phrase, punching down on these communities, it, it shows that that's okay. Mm. to an audience that's consuming that even if it is comedy even if it's not serious it really is and that's exactly it it's it's then showing that that's okay because it's not just the mind those minority groups who will bear the brunt but it's the children and teenagers who think it's then okay to go and be transphobic or racist or sexist at school exactly and 
because they've seen Ricky Gervais get thousands of laughs from that kind of comment and from that kind of joke, I think one of the most damaging things is then people think that's okay, I can go make that joke and I can go and be part of that problem. And Mm -hmm. you know, those issues then perpetuate and they never go away. But if we, okay, so the thing, Ricky Gervais, I've not heard him do a transphobic joke. He does not all the time. Okay. Yeah, time. in his Netflix special, recent, yeah. uh, maybe not recently, but whatever was on Netflix most recent of his, he had transphobia in there. Okay, cool. Um, I know Dave Chappelle has done a whole uh, episode, a whole stand-up about, it was, wasn't that funny, to be honest with you. But I think comedy is a thing where you can be as raw as possible, honestly. I think you... Comedy is comedy. It's meant to make you laugh. If we start thinking about comedians as being these wonderful philosophical characters who are trying to push messages in society, that's not what comedians are here to do. They're here to make us laugh. Now, you're saying punching down. If they're taking the piss out of everyone, including themselves, not punching down. You're just punching everywhere mm. to make people laugh. That's, that's their jobs, to make people laugh. So if okay. you're saying to them they can't do this, or they can't do that, they can't do... Like, there's been... There's, like, Dave Chappelle, for example, takes the piss out of black people. He's also black. Is that not allowed now? I think that's why there's the... um, Punching down is where there's a power imbalance. I think, um, you know, a white man... I'm not saying a white man can't be funny or can't be a comedian. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. There are so many funny white men. Yeah, yeah. Um, But if you are... um, If you are making every minority group the front of every joke mm-hmm. that is punching down down because you there is a power dynamic mm-hmm. you know you've you've got a certain amount of privilege sure. um and entitlement essentially mm-hmm. i think it's entitlement mm-hmm. to know that you can get away with these things and you can stand on stage and you can make those jokes essentially you can get away with it because you are white and because you're a man whereas anyone else of any other demographic can't get on that same stage and get away with a joke in the same with the same ease because they've got certain other qualities. You mean women? Because men, black comedians do, they get away with it as well. So I think maybe women, yeah. but I think women can get away with the same jokes as well. They obviously don't want to do those jokes because mm. they can be quite immature, like you've pointed out, or quite unintelligent. Mm. But I think a comedian's job is to make people laugh. Make people laugh. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. But does that need to be at the expense of these communities, of these minorities? For me, if they're taking the piss out of everyone, why should one community not be part of the joke as well? If everyone's getting the brunt of a joke, then why should one community be seen as different to the other community? Because then you're because, saying the community is different. Because, because, say, and you know, as a white woman, sure. white privileged woman, if someone's, if I'm the brunt of a joke, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna care too much mm-hmm. because I can walk away and not face racism, sure. not face you know a whole host of different things. Mm-hmm. If I'm someone else that is getting abuse every single day and then I'm the brunt of this joke, I'm gonna walk away and maybe even face more of that prejudice mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of that joke. Do you think so? Yeah, I, I think agree for some with that. communities, yeah. I think for some communities. So what about a black comedian doing jokes about the ghetto and going to the ghetto and buying drugs off of a baby in a car who's selling <laughs> drugs? <laughs> Which is a joke that Dave Chappelle has done. Is that is that offensive? Cuz I didn't find it offensive. I found it quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tricky to to speak on that as well. I think I get what you're I, I, see the thing is I don't just like if you're taking the piss out of uh, of any community that's marginalised mm. especially if in the trans community like right now it's very very topical and I feel like Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle I didn't, haven't heard Ricky Gervais's one but I've heard Dave Chappelle's one felt very pointed mm. and that was very on the nose he was doing it to elicit some sort of response from the from, from everyone and he got it mm. That, I think that's too far. Because at that point, you're just literally targeting the community for the sake of your own purpose. If you're taking the piss out of everyone, trying to make everyone laugh, fine with that. Mm. I'm absolutely fine with that. I think you came up with a good example before we start recording, which is blackface. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. And you said, would you be okay without markers? And I was like, I need to know the context mm. yeah. of the blackface. And I think it comes down to this notion of entitlement as well. Entitlement to be able to speak upon a specific topic that doesn't necessarily, is not a lived experience mm -hmm. or have anything to do with you for the sake of a few laughs, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And I think you could, you could argue that with what you just said about Dave Chappelle, potentially. Yeah. But, um, so you've brought up a comedian called Daniel Sloss. Sloss. Okay. I don't know who that is, but I think. I think you'd find him funny. He's got quite maybe a lot of dark do. humor. Maybe would Yeah, maybe yeah. would do. But I think what's happening is people like Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle. I mean, Ricky Gervais is nearly 70 now. So. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. 70. 60 something, yeah. Oh. So his, his comedy, his brand of comedy is not going to appeal to someone who's 21, 22. They're not going to find it particularly funny. He's going to die soon. No, Dave, Dave, Dave Chappelle is in his 50s. His comedy is not going to appeal to some. Well, it might do, but it seems to have caused a bit of a problem, to be honest with you, with people who are younger. People mm. seem to like Dave Chappelle. Mm. So this, this brand of comedy is slowly being phased out. So I wouldn't mm. worry about it too much. We're going to have loads of unfunny message-based people in the future. I don't think it needs to be message-based. No, it doesn't. That was funny. just my example. Thing is, though, like, also, okay. you know, I've got a very dark sense of humour mm -hmm. and I also agree. I also am on the side of we shouldn't be censoring. You know, it's, it is really difficult because I think a lot of the comedy that actually I find funny is someone else might not find, find yeah, funny. Yeah, it's mm. weird so to it's draw the line. Very subjective. Yeah, it's very mm. difficult. Very, very subjective. Um, and I don't think all comedy should be censored because, yeah, I find a lot of dark comedy very funny. Mm. Um, I guess it's just really thinking about what the repercussions are of the jokes that you're making mm -hmm. yeah. and who, what's your responsibility and what's what's the effect. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's a comedy night um, in Islington that I go to sometimes just at a pub. Oh, I love that one. The one at the Camden yeah, Head, yeah. That's so good. Yeah, and they've got it every night and it's like four or five up and coming comedians, amateur comedians. And not one of those, I've never gone and listen to people spew transphobic mm -hmm. you know all the rest of it none of the jokes are i don't think um making fun of minority groups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for the most part all of them are really good and they're really funny really really funny because they're imaginative and they're intelligent mm -hmm. and they're not messaging it's not like they're preaching they're not making you try and believe something it's not like that it's not a very moral based type of comedy sure but it's genuinely funny um, and it's not punching down. So it's it's possible. And mm -hmm. there are so many people doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I don't, uh, yeah, I think it totally is possible. And I think, like I said, those comedians you're speaking of now, Dave Chabal, Ricky Gervais, Chris Rock, are uh, like in the 50s, 60s. They're gonna be phased out anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. <laughs> They're gonna be gone. So <laughs> this, this, this is not gonna be an issue pretty soon. And comedy will be soft and boring. Don't worry. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It'll be soft and boring. I, honestly, I can't see any, any comedians coming up. Like if you think about the uh, films from 10 years ago, mm. like the great films from the comedy films, like they don't exist, they don't exist anymore because comedy's gone really soft. No one's finding comedy funny. I do agree that yeah, comedy films. I think that's a. I mean, that's a great uh, problem of the film industry yeah. as a whole. Mm -hmm. I don't think not mm -hmm. necessarily. That's. I think that. I think it does lead into this though. I think that the idea of comedy has changed so much. I think certain things you can't say and can't do. I do think that mm. as well. I agree. I agree. And I, but I think that doesn't. That's not just because of comedy. That is like all political opinion. I think films now are mm -hmm. so safe and so mm -hmm. risk averse yeah. mm -hmm. and so unoriginal. It's not just comedy, it's so it's a range of different things. It goes across all mediums, doesn't true. it really? True. Yeah. Exactly. So true. Yeah. Because no studio wants to put out a risky film mm -hmm. that might offend someone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, absolutely. It's like I was reading an article the other day. I used to love the Sex and the City um T V show. Mm -hmm. And they've released like a spin off called And Just Like That, I think. And Just Like That is so PC right down to the casting and the characters and the storylines that's injected into every single narrative. Mm. And it's such a flip on what Sex and the City was because it really wasn't mm. PC. It was actually mm. quite awful, some <laughs> of the things that were said. And it's very similar to Friends in that respect. And it's, it is, it, it's a nod to that. The reason I say this is a nod to how everything is kind of being glossed over with this PC brush and ensuring that everything is safe. So what do you think, what should they have done with 
that new series that came out, do you think they should have stayed as they were or well, had a middle ground? It's tricky, isn't it? Because where's the line? Because I, I don't know if they brought that out to kind of plaster over mm. the series, the old series, because of how outrageous some of the scenes and the dialogue were. I don't know what they should have done. Maybe they should have left it to its time. Maybe they should have yeah. maybe diluted it a little bit so it wasn't, you know, as woke and PC, because it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> when yeah. I was watching, I watched a couple of clips. I don't have the streaming <laughs> service that I'm just like, that's on. But I was watching a couple of the clips and it is, it gets a bit exhausting. A bit unnatural. Yeah, and uncomfortable almost, mm. because it's like they're trying to cover their backs so much mm. that it just becomes mm. this whole... Mm. I found that with Sex Education. Thing. with The new series. Was, yeah. Yes. I thought it was that brilliant. That's a really good one. First, first, second, third series. Yeah. Were really good. They were amazing, weren't really they? Really original. And then the last one was just trying to push. It was very kind of confused Confusing, as well. Very yeah, confused with place. what it was trying to be saying. Um, trying to put in every single different Make, aspect yeah. of society Absolutely. in quite an unnatural way so it was quite a jar i found it a very jarring watch that's the key word is unnatural is like they're making it really 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 inclusive and you know commenting like you said to everything it, it just becomes really uncomfortable because it's unnatural mm -hmm. yeah because they're trying to condense it into these 30 minute episodes yeah i think that's what it is it's like we see all of this inclusivity or at least not inclusivity necessarily, but all of these um, communities and minorities and being marginalized as well in everyday society, that when you try and take all of that and put it into this 30 minute episode, it becomes a bit overwhelming. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's why I don't watch it. I think you'd, I think the first season, first and second season are really good. Okay. He's okay. not gonna watch it though. I'm not. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but okay so are we saying then that cancel culture is good or bad oh i think it's good to hold people to account mm -hmm. uh, yes that's important mm -hmm. and it's good to call out mm -hmm. um i think in most cases cancelling you know forever is probably not a good thing mm -hmm. having that kind of blueprint is not very nurturing for a healthy society. Sure. There mm -hmm. should be more discussions, more conversations about why things are wrong, mm. what people can do to improve. Mm -hmm. And generally the witch hunts that we see on social media are quite damaging and polarizing and reductive. Um, but at the same time, it's yeah, it's good to hold people up to account and realize that racism is not good and sexism is not good and everything else yeah yeah i second that i think that was the perfect way of saying it holding people accountable and just having those decisions because cancel culture is so reactive that i'm not saying it's necessarily a good or bad thing but that i feel like conversations around it like the whole roll dial thing having conversations around why those words aren't mm. necessarily great or you know x y and z is definitely adaptable to that mm. question mm. what about the art that they create should that be cancelled no no again not cancelled just Ignored. spoken about no spoken about yeah have discussions around why what, why it what should about be r kelly should you listen to his music no <laughs> i don't no not even no no not sure? even mm. i don't think mm. i would no, no. ignition Bit of a banger. Remix it to is. Mm. It is. It was a bop. It, it is a, a banger. But, but this is the thing. It's like it's like when we were tainted. talking about. It's tainted. Like when we were talking about looking at Picasso's work, for example. You will look at it now, or, or at least I will look at it now, mm -hmm. from the perspective of who he was as a person. With R. Kelly, mm. if I was to listen to his music, that's all I'd really mm. think mm -hmm. about, and mm -hmm. that's not something I necessarily mm -hmm. want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm being ignorant to what had happened, but you know, it's kind of giving energy into something that was awful. And your experience of art is so much more than just the medium. It's not just the painting mm -hmm. or the music or the book. An experience of art is who that artist was as well. Like when you listen to the Beatles, it's not just listening to a Beatles song. You're thinking about the band and who they were and the time and everything they did. Yeah. 
So I think, and that's the joy that people get when they listen to music or they read a book or they watch a film or they see a piece of art. It's, it's not just, you can't just separate that experience. Okay, so there's no separation between the two. Well, I think it's just so much more. I think, I think it's really difficult to consume a piece of art as it is without knowing about how it was created. And there's so much enjoyment to be had when you know what, how it's been mm -hmm. created. That's why people study art and study music. And yeah. Knowing that context when you're consuming is an amazing experience. So then when you know what that context is and it might be a bit darker than you thought, that comes into it. Okay. Beautifully said. It was. Yes. And what are your thoughts? Mm, I think there's definitely a difference between the artist and the art. Hmm. It's a huge difference. I can watch a Kevin Spacey film. I'm fine with it. I can separate the two things. He's playing a character. Mm. It's not Kevin Spacey. It's, mm. He's playing a character. Mm. So I'm cool with that. R. Kelly, you do, you do think, you do naturally think, I like this song, but <laughs> he's done some like stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, shouldn't like, like it. it. He's done some stuff, and he shouldn't. But he's been doing stuff since the early 2000s. So I've been listening. I knew we knew about it back then. Just no one did anything about it. Mm. So if I was listening to it back then. And I knew about it. Why you can't listen to it now? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like the two things are to me are very different. I do agree with you with what you said though. There is a huger story behind all art, mm. but I choose not to delve into the huger story. I don't mm -hmm. know the person. Mm -hmm. I don't know Woody Allen personally. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't know his thoughts. But some of his films are really good. Mm. And I think that is. I mean, you can still have an amazing piece of art, an amazing piece of music. Mm despite who has created it. For sure, yeah. It yeah. can still be an incredible piece sure. of artwork. Totally. So Picasso is I still, I do still, I still love his art. Well, of course. I love his It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But Philanderer. Yeah. yeah. Shall we leave it there? <laughs> I think we should. At Philanderer. Yeah. <laughs> what a word. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us, Mary. Thanks it's been an me. absolute treat to have you in front of the camera. Thank you. <laughs> and the mic for our audio platforms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and please do like, subscribe and keep watching. There's more content. It's all coming. It's all coming. And there's past content. There's Unless a lot, we've been actually. Cancelled. If we've been cancelled, even better. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there you go. Yeah. We may yeah. not make any more after this episode. <laughs> Who knows? So enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah, enjoy them while they last. <laughs> Bye. Bye.